I'm going to talk about color today and I actually hadn't planned on doing this in the web series but I've got a lot of comments about color so I'm thinking this is exactly why I'm doing the web series and this is exactly why I want people to chime in because I can alter what I want to do so I'd like to talk about color because it seems to be one of the biggest um, stumbling blocks for starting and um, I have a college degree in art, so I've been doing color all my life. And I had an architecture business and interior design, so I, am, I really am a colorist. But by no means am I qualified to teach a color theory class. But I'd like to work on color and how it relates to the La Paz, and I think we can do that. So I don't have a color wheel in the house, so I put together a fabric color wheel. Isn't that perfect? Um, let's start now. I've had a comment from Raven about the colors that I'm using and the color uh, series, uh, episode that I did yesterday. And I talk about my quilt. Now here's the catch, and she's so smart. I am talking about the quilt that I've already made that I don't have here because it's in Houston and I apologize for that and but I started this web series and my quilt hasn't been here for a month and so let me explain a little bit more about color and that so she looked at my color inspiration and she said I, I'm looking at your quilt which is the stuff in the background and I see blue but I don't see that in your card that's exactly right so on my second quilt which you do see here I use this as my color inspiration, and then I threw in teal. So let's, um, let's talk about color now as it pertains to the La Paz. I just wanted to clarify that. All right, just to reiterate, there's different ways to pick a color combination. Some people are just doing random and going right through their stash. And that's awesome, because you don't have to buy a lot of fabric. And I think with that particular setup, you need to make sure you repeat uh, the colors. If you happen to have this one red fabric and you only use it once and all of your randomness, that red rosette or piece of fabric is gonna stand out. So to help tie in colors, you actually need to repeat them in different spots on the quilt. So maybe that's top bottom and middle so if you repeat those the eye will dance around your quilt so that's that's one of the keys for using the random color set now i talked about some of my color inspiration here's a few this is just a card i don't even know where i got it it's in my file um here's another combination i happen to like and then I wanna talk about this guy because this really is the combination that I used. All right, here is my fabric stash that I'm using, or that I did use for the first La Paz, and now I'm using it for the second one, and I've just added another color. But let's not talk about the second one, let's talk about the first one. So Raven mentioned she sees a lot of light sort of muted colors in my color inspiration card and she wants to know how I got to the quilt that I made because it's a lot brighter. So when I use this as a color inspiration, I pick all different kinds of value of that color and I'm going to talk about value next but just bear with me. So here is my, I call it leaf green, lime green, here are all my colors. I don't even know if there is one that exactly matches that. You can tell, it's pretty light. So I am all over the green color, but it's not a green that, that's pretty dark and that's more of a grass, I don't know, more of a forest green. So I'm not in that range. I really am in the lime green range. So that's that color. Here is my peachy kind of orange. Again, I don't know if there's exactly that color in this combination. Maybe that background might be. So 
when you use a color inspiration, it doesn't mean that you just use the colors there. You need a wide range of um, value and saturation. And I'll talk about that later too. Um, and then here's my pink. Actually, that kind of, yeah, that's probably more pink. This, this one kind of, a lot of times they overlap. You know, I've got orange in my pink, so it could go to either pile. But for the most part, I categorize by the color that I think I see in it. So this is predominantly pink that goes in my pink. But you can see that is clearly not the card color, but that might be. So here's my pink range. And then here's my, and I call that lavender. Here's my lavender range. Uh, you can see I've gone pretty dark. I mean, it's definitely purple. And that one shouldn't be there because that's part of my other color. But it, it's, you know, here's, here's some lighter ones. It's got some green. So you can see I'm not just using these colors. All right, now I want to talk about value. So very few people are doing black and white quilts, so we're going to talk about value within color. I don't arrange my fabric in values because I'll just look at it and because I like them more just in patterns. All right, these are like my pink purples. This is a light value, which is more in the pastel range. And some of these don't fall exactly into a category. You know, it's not all set up in segments. This is probably more medium. I don't know, that might. Um, and these are sort of my darks. You, I don't have a lot of darks. And so light, medium, and dark. And it isn't always obvious because there's white in here, there's pink in here. So what I do is I take a picture with my camera and I take all the color out so it's a black and white. And you'll see very clearly, if you don't understand about value, the, where the fabric falls in that spectrum. Now there's also something that you have to deal with too is saturation. And I think when um, Raven was asking me about the color card not really matching with my quilt is I have taken a lot of liberty here and used a lot of saturated color. So value can also be the same as saturation. These are muted or lights. These are medium. And here are my darks. Now, Technically, saturation and value are different. Saturation is the intensity of the color. And for instance, this is a very saturated pink. Now, and it's not really a dark, but it's very saturated. So that's the difference. And so what you wanna remember is the contrast. So this purple here, is a dark and I have it up next to a medium. Now, these are all really saturated colors, but I'm able to get the contrast because this is a dark. And then I've also played on the warm cool thing, which it gets complicated, but um, I think the La Paz works the best when you can see the shapes or you can see the rings or you can see all the different pieces. That's why we're sewing all these little pieces together. So I try to use contrast in either dark or light, dark or medium, or I do warm, cool, which I talked about yesterday. Warm, cool, this is a warm. And so when I look at this from afar, you know, even this sort of blends in, it doesn't blend in, but you'll see the contrast and then you'll see the play of color here in the ring. And then I've accentuated that by using different star points. Another way to get a color group or a color inspiration is just use a line of fabric. This is Anna Maria Horner. All the colors go together. That's what designers do. They build a collection and 
the, the fabrics go together on purpose. Tulip Pink, all these designers are making collections. So I happen to love Anna's fabrics and I didn't, I used some of them in my La Paz, but I could have used the whole collection. It would have worked nicely. She uses a lot of medium value fabrics. So it's a little tricky in that you've got to kind of play off the warm, cool thing and find, you know, this is a nice light. But you could see that the value of her fabrics tends to be similar. So it's a little trickier with this quilt. Your quilt tends to be a little bit darker. But I hope that's helpful. I don't know if it's more confusing, but it, again, just start. Just make one or two rosettes in fabrics that you like and you can just not have a plan. It's perfectly fine. It all works. I really haven't seen an ugly um, La Paz yet. And if you're just doing random fabrics and you don't have a particular plan, the way to make that all tie in really easily is just keep repeating the color. I go for, I look at color first and then I look at the pattern on that color or that fabric. So go for color and just repeat the colors frequently and it'll all tie in, it'll all work. Just start.